Welcome guys to Amazon Lit. My name is Sebastian Swick. And I'm Eric Castellanos. And we're here kind of just to show you guys what it's like to have a true e-commerce business. A true e-commerce business. That means we have 30 plus employees. That means, and this isn't to brag, but we're doing millions of dollars a month in sales through our channels. And, um, you know, we've grown this from scratch. We grew it from a basement. You know, we're not mm. going to get into that right now. We're we'll going to talk about where we began. But let's talk about some of the content that we're going to have on the channel. Yeah. So essentially the channel is going to be an educational reality show. So we're going to give you an in-depth look of what happens on a day-to-day -day basis at a multi-million dollar third-party Amazon seller. And uh, what that's going to look like is videos downstairs, people pro uh, processing products, unloading trucks, loading trucks, mm -hmm. how, to, how to put orders in with mm -hmm. wholesalers and distributors, mm -hmm. you know, how to deal with reimbursements and understand shipping fees, mm -hmm. and the list goes on. How to analyze products, how to choose how much product you're going to be purchasing, how to know you're getting the right price how to know how much quantity to purchase of that product, the different listings that you could purchase for that product, um, you know, how to source from different different suppliers so you could kind of play off both of them to get the best pricing possible. Um, we're going to show you the way that our buyers purchase. We're going to show you some of the some of the techniques and templates that we use to do our purchasing, and essentially show you how we went from two thousand dollars in a in a home in a basement to where we are today at our twenty thousand square foot facility with over thirty employees, full time employees, not VAs, and how we continue to grow. Mm. I think, like I said, one of the biggest reasons we started we started this channel and we started going on Instagram is because we saw a lot of misinformation. Mm. There are a lot of gurus out there who claim that they can help you make money and they can show you the way to sell online, but they're not established and they don't have the true experience. I mean, between us two alone, we have over 10 years of experience selling online. That's a lot of experience. And um, Sebastian's completely right. A lot of these guys, not to say that a lot of them aren't actually doing what they say they're doing. A lot of them are posting valuable content of their warehouse and talking about how to research private label products and how to do wholesale. And a lot of the content out there is phenomenal and I watch a lot of it myself. But through watching the good content, it's also mixed with a lot of poor content of people telling you, do you want to make $1 million in the next two months? And like what they don't explain to the to the consumer of that information is like making one million dollars in revenue is completely different than profiting one million dollars, and I don't think that's explained clearly, and it and it leaves kind of a bad taste in people's mouths when they invest two thousand, three thousand dollars in a course, expecting to make a million dollars because that's what they were promised, and at the end of the course, you know, not only is their revenue at that number but their profit is definitely not at that number as well. Well, and, and with a majority of them, it's like, how can you show them how to make a million dollars a month if you don't even make a million dollars a month? I this mean, we're true. doing two million dollars a month and we've busted our butts and we've been doing yeah. this for years. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah, like Eric said, I'm not gonna keep repeating it. We, we're gonna jump off of this and talk more about us, but please be careful when somebody says, this is what I make online because it can be misconstrued as that's what they're profiting. Making and profiting are very different, you know? I can do $100,000 in sales on Shopify, but then when you add in uh, the packaging fees, you know, the cost of the product itself, reimbursements and refunds, labor, um, labor the time that you spend to research it because your time isn't free, right? Um, that all adds up and that's not talked about. So we're going to give you the honest truth, just really show you, like Eric said, educational portion plus the reality version of, of content and uh, take it from there. Yeah. So a little bit about ourselves. We didn't know we sell products on Amazon. It wasn't, I didn't wake up one morning many, many years ago and just decide to start uh, to build a business. Sebastian didn't wake up one day and uh, you know, decide to build a multi-million dollar business it's selling products on Amazon. I definitely have my own trials and tribulations in life. What about you, Sebastian? Me too. Yeah, so we, you know, we weren't living our best life. 
seven years ago uh, when the business started. Sebastian started the business in his basement. And, uh, you know, were you a waiter at the time? Uh, I, I was a waiter right before that. I gave up my waiting job in January of 2012. Uh, and I began this right, right then and there. Mm. Um, and I just took action, you know? I just jumped right in. I had no idea where it was gonna take me, but I took action. I put my back to the wall and I knew I had to kind of start pushing forward. I was gonna get crushed into that wall. Yeah. Remember the first time I went in his basement and saw his Amazon set up? He, you had maybe, it was Christmas. It was right before Christmas. <laughs> And you had like a bunch of products from Costco. And I was like, Sebastian, what are you doing? He's like, I'm selling products on Amazon. And I laughed, you know, because I, I didn't understand how, how the, the opportunity that was there in that little basement with that pallet worth of products. I just didn't quite comprehend it. Everyone laughed. Uh, Eric's not the only one. My other friends, I remember lugging boxes up, 50 pound boxes up, bringing them outside to my uncle's van um, because I was renting out of his house at that time and he was helping me. And so I'm lugging it up into his van. And I remember I have a couple guys that are waiting outside. We were about to go grab a bite to eat and, and they're laughing like, what are you doing? And I'm just like, I'm, you know, I'm just running a business. And they're like, no, you're not. And they didn't mean it in a harsh, harsh way, but they're like, no, you're not. This isn't a business. You loading boxes up from your basement and at that point I already had a bigger vision of I because I thought it was a business I didn't know where exactly it was going to go I didn't envision warehouses yeah. or anything like that but I did see it as a business because I saw myself as an asset and it was really cool providing service mm. like you have to like it I enjoy providing this service I mean it's not life-changing life-altering service but I'm providing products you know that bring comfort to people's yeah. lives and it's cool it's like little comforts it's small services but we do a lot of it and it adds yeah. up yeah and if uh the best way to check those services i love on the sellers app you get the notifications of people leaving feedback mm -hmm. and sometimes you'll get those real rewarding ones where someone's like you know i couldn't find this product anywhere and i'm disabled i have trouble getting out of the house and i ordered it from you guys and now you know, now I get it bi-weekly, and thank you so much. I appreciate what you do. You know, and that and that blends in with the guy who ordered five pounds of gummy bears but got 4.95 pounds and uh, makes a big deal about it. So you, you take the good with the bad, and you, and you try to focus on the positive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, let's, uh, you know, let's go a little bit further into where that took us. We were in a basement, and then from there, we decided at, at some point, you know, we... At, we had to take a risk, which was like, okay, do we stay in this basement? Do we stay in this house now that we see some profit coming in? Or do we take a risk and invest in a, in a small space? We And we did. We took a thousand square foot spot. Uh, you know, we had to put some money down on that spot a couple months and we had to sign a lease for a year. And it was scary. It was really scary because it was like... You know, shoot, if this thing falls apart, you know, what's going to happen from, you know, what's going to happen? I'm going to lose essentially everything that I've worked for for the first six, seven months. Uh, but I knew at the same time I looked at the other side, which is like, how much more can I grow in this basement? It was crowded. And then, do you remember the basement? Yeah, yeah. So the basement, my, my, my cousin, who I love... He, he, was, uh, he was freshly out of college. He was living with me. It was just me and him in this house. He was freshly out of college. And uh, right up the street, there was a, a university, Montclair State University. And he knew some guys from there that were from his same fraternity because he went to Penn State. And I guess because he was right out of college, they called him the godfather. <laughs> and, uh, and he had these frat guys come over. And one day before, before I really started filling up the basement with products, they decided to have a party down there and they graffiti the whole place with all the yeah. with all the fraternity signs and everything. So now here I am, I'm working in this basement now, fast forward, it's packed with all sorts of different products from, you know, uh, cat litter to, to vitamins peanuts and, yeah. to, to peanuts. And it's covered in graffiti. And people, people who come to the house who don't know me or just don't know what's going on, they're looking at me like I'm a madman down there. <laughs> <laughs> With my computer, my printer set up, my little scale, tons of boxes, tons of tape, and just uh, wheeling and dealing. Yeah, I remember early on lugging a bunch of boxes to the post office with you and Ted. Yeah. Filling up his van. Yeah. His work van. Yeah, we did a lot of, we did a lot of, uh, put a lot of miles on that van. Definitely. So then we moved, or then you moved into this uh, thousand square foot warehouse. Yes. I, I worked there. I didn't come into the business till about three, four years ago. 
Um, I was there in the thousand square foot warehouse mm -hmm. for on and off here and there. Well, you know me, my whole practice, yeah, whole yeah. lives. So. Sebastian and I go way back. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then we're and then we moved right down the street here. Yeah, we moved down the street and we went from a thousand to twenty five hundred to five thousand to ten thousand, and now we're at this twenty thousand square foot facility. Yeah. And it's like I can't stress enough. It's like you can do it too. There's no reason you can't. I just I'm not going to tell you it's going to happen overnight. I am going to tell you it's going to be a ton of work. A ton of work, uh, a ton of fighting with yourself, the internal battle. I don't think you hear enough about that, at least for me. Mm -hmm. I'm human, so I have the one side of my head that's telling me I can't do it. You know, you're not going to be able to succeed. Just go get a regular 9 to 5. And then I got the other part of me that's like, no, keep moving forward. This is what you love. Keep trudging this road to happy destiny, hopefully, and, and see where it takes you. So it's, it, and it's always, I mean, even to this day, there's still products that we pick up. Just yesterday, we picked up that product and we were concerned about yeah. it. And there is some risk involved, but you have to know when you put your back to the wall, as long as you don't give up, you'll, you'll get through it. You will yeah. get through it, 100%. We, yeah. we, at one point years ago, sold chocolate liqueur. Uh, and it was a huge product online until Amazon banned it because uh, it, had, liquor. it had liquor in it. You know, and even though it was sold in the grocery part of the store, and they wouldn't check IDs in the store, so because it had such a small amount, uh, it still, it yeah. still was considered to have liquor. And I mean, that was a product that was literally during the Christmas season was moving two to three hundred a day. Yeah. So we had fifty thousand dollars worth of that product, which was a large portion of our money at that time. Like you know, almost forty percent of all of our cash assets, liquid mm -hmm. assets at that time, and all of a sudden Amazon bans it, mm -hmm. you know? But we survived, yeah. we, sold, we sold the majority. Taught, it taught you how to sell on eBay as well. I, I learned how to sell on eBay. Yeah, That's where I learned how to sell on eBay, and that's where I really started understanding the fulfilled by merchant, which means sending the product directly to the consumer versus FBA, which is sending it to an Amazon fulfillment center. And that's something we'll get into later yeah. on if you're unfamiliar with that. Yeah. So now where we are today, we're in this beautiful 20,000 square foot warehouse. Um, about a little over 15,000 square feet of it is below us downstairs. You can, you can check some of our content for some footage from down there. Um, it's where we package the products, where we count the products, store the products, and do our shipping and receiving. And then upstairs where we are, we're in our conference room, and behind us there is um, the dining hall and kitchen. Yeah, dining hall and kitchen. And then we have a large center area where all of our buyers and our web developers kind of congregate and communicate. And then there's some private offices um, for us that we, uh, that we have. Um, but right now we have, what, 32, 32 employees. Yeah, and, and, and we were fortunate enough that when we took this lease, there was no office built out yet, so we yeah. actually got to build it out to the way we wanted. Yeah. And that's why, like Eric said, there's a huge area for us to congregate because I am all about communication. Yes. I think the more communication, the more time you spend with each other, the more the ideas are flowing Absolutely. and the more you're going to grow. You know, um, I... Even though Eric and I spend a lot of time in our office, any chance we get, we're out there. Where yeah. where Eric's going downstairs to the warehouse, he's helping the operations, he's looking for inefficiencies, he's getting his hands dirty, and he's trying to find ways that we can just progress. You know, and I'm doing the same thing with with the developers, and then we're both getting together and trying to help our buyers to purchase better. Mm -hmm. And because of that, in the past six months, we've grown our profit margin by thirty percent. Yeah. So yeah. So it, it works. But, you know, just like, and, and there's, it's a two-piece thing. When you're growing a business, you also have to grow yourself. There's no way Eric could be stagnant and I could be stagnant mm. or, or moving backwards and the business would be growing. Mm. It just wouldn't happen. Yeah. Like, we're the leaders of this company and the way to lead it is to constantly work on yourself. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's the beautiful thing about having a good, a good uh, core team and then also a good team as a whole. For, for whoever your team is and you're hiring to run your business because it, it allows for the opportunity for you to push each other, you know, and kind of inspire each other because not everybody's on every single day, mm -hmm. but the ability to have different personalities and different mindsets all in one 
um, community allows us to kind of motivate and inspire each other to grow in, in ways that we wouldn't find really possible and we love throwing ideas at the wall and bouncing things around between each other and seeing what sticks we try some we don't and some fail some succeed but the business really this business was built on on a lot of failure yeah. a lot a lot of failure you yeah. know but around that right around the corner of every failure is a success yeah and, and you know I it's learning experiences. That's I, I'm always saying. It's, as long as, as a, it's only a failure if we give up. Like mm. things fall apart, and we're looking at it like, shoot, you know what what went wrong. But no matter what, like we pick back up. Mm. And it, and it, and another great part of having a great team is sometimes I get so infuriated and so frustrated at, at certain areas that I don't I don't want to pick it up. But Eric will pick it up, or 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 someone else on my team, Mac will pick it up, or 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 uh, you know Brian or Nick or someone else on our team will come and and grab the baton. Greg, Greg's definitely a baton holder for us yeah, here. Uh, he run he runs the whole operation downstairs, and there are times where you need your team to kind of push you forward, and and I know, you know that that happens for me. Mm. I'm, I'm grateful for the team that I have, mm. and. Uh, you know, so anyway, some of the content that we're going to be covering is what we're talking about here. We're also going to be covering how to sell online. We'll start with how to sell on Amazon because that's the largest marketplace. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it it's ten times larger than the second. Yeah. You know, hundred hundred million prime members. Hundred million prime <laughs> members in the U.S. alone. Uh, I mean, most of I hope everyone out there is familiar with Amazon at this point. So, yeah. so we're going to start there and kind of teach you and show you like how the inner workings of Amazon works and how when you order a product online on Amazon, there's a sixty percent chance that it's not actually an Amazon product, but it's a third party seller like mm -hmm. ourselves that is selling you the product, and then Amazon's taking a a fee because they are a marketplace. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go into that. What's some of the other things that we're going to really go into, Eric? We're going to talk about contacting uh, wholesalers and distributors and brands and manufacturers and, and the exact process. We'll go through a phone call with you. You know, Sebastian or I will be the wholesaler and then Sebastian or I will be the actual company trying to reach out. We'll go through the phone call process and what that looks like and how to set up those accounts. Because if you're not building relationships, then, then you're not growing. So that's an important aspect of the business. And, and we're going to talk about a ton of other things what else are we going to talk about we're going to talk about uh setting up a business you know making sure you're you're registered to to pay your taxes because if you start a business without being registered to pay taxes uncle sam's not going to be happy and you don't want that so yeah. we'll we'll kind of di dive into that and show you how to do that um we're going to dive into how to set up an amazon account maybe some of you are familiar with that you're right at the beginning so we'll, we'll jump right into the basics and we'll cover all the areas well then we'll go then we'll go real deep and we'll go into advertising and PPC campaigns and, and coupons and offering discounts and setting up feedback templates mm -hmm. and, and really going into some of the, the high end stuff, the more you know, the higher caliber stuff like um, reimbursements and making sure that mm -hmm. making sure that because believe it or not, fulfillment fees change and sometimes the inaccuracy is is on Amazon's part. They're not perfect and they owe you money and you can get that money back. I mean, how how much have we been reimbursed in the past four months? It was over uh, ten grand. Yeah, so Eighteen eighteen thousand dollars since uh, January first, two thousand nineteen. Yeah, so so we're gonna go into that. Like, how do we do that? It, 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 there's there's reports that Amazon provides. They're very transparent. It's all there, but it is hard to read if you don't understand it. Absolutely. I mean, it took us years to really learn the inner workings of what all these reports mean because you sometimes you need to pull more than one report to get the full picture. Mm. Um, so we're gonna get into that. What are some of the other things we're gonna get into? We're gonna talk about researching products. You know how to read Keepa properly because a lot of you probably know what Keepa is and you spent some time researching it. A lot of you maybe don't know what Keepa is, but we're going to show you how we research and how we train our team of buyers to research and use Keepa and understand the metrics that are in Keepa to better purchase products. And we'll talk about some of the other widgets we use, like the Seller App Calculator, um, which is actually Amazon's calculator, and some some of the other widgets. DS Quick View. The list goes on. We use about five consistent widgets here that allow us to maximize our review of a product before we end up purchasing it and then you know negotiating those prices with the end uh, distributor so you can get the best margin possible 
and also the template and the formula that we use because we have all these great widgets that we have and, and we have some of our own in-house software but you need to place it in a certain spreadsheet or, or, or a certain formula right? you need to have in order to keep track of all this information because yeah. you're going to have a want price, the price that you want, a, a need price which is the highest price you're willing to pay for it, then you're going to wait for the, the supplier to respond back with the price that they're going to offer you and you're going to need to see if that, that fits that criteria criteria of being somewhere in the range of the yeah. want and the need and you're going to need to have all the information about the product to ensure that you're purchasing the correct product because the last thing you want to do is order a product and swear that you're purchasing the correct product and then it come in different. Yeah. So we're going to cover that. We're going to cover UPCs. We're going to cover what an item number is. We're going to cover different supplier information. We're going to cover the lingo. Some of you might not know what a pro forma is. Some of you might not know what OTC means. Some of you might not be familiar with IOs you know, or OTC wise off invoices and, and and all the different kind of lingo that's behind the scenes and in, in the retail wholesale distribution world and we're going to cover that because if you really want to grow a business uh, you know this is what it's about if you're going to grow an e-commerce business and yeah. we learned it through going through trade shows mm. and that's something we're going to cover too right yeah. what are we going to talk about with that tons of trade shows we're going to give you some of the trade shows that we attend annually and we go to consistently, and then we're gonna talk about how to research and find trade shows in your area. If you're not in a position really to travel the country and explore trade show opportunities, I'm sure there's one right in your backyard, and we'll show you actually how to find that, how to register for that trade show, how to possibly get a discounted ticket for that trade show, how to possibly get some perks when you're attending that trade show, and then how to research companies so you're not just walking into that trade show blind, no idea what's happening there, and then also, you know, ensuring that you have business cards and you're and you're being personable and meeting these people and uh, it, the, the list goes on and we'll talk about those expenses because at the end of the year a lot of things that Eric just mentioned are tax write-offs yeah and we'll talk about that and we'll talk about some so you know you're gonna have to pay taxes and you're gonna have to make sure that you're you're also paying sales tax or that the consumers paying the sales tax for you and then you're paying it uh, then you're paying it at yeah. the end of the quarter or at the end of the year, depending on what size your business is. And we'll yeah. cover all those things. We'll also be covering credit options. So as far as credit cards, best credit cards to buy or not to buy to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? To, uh, to apply, for. apply for. Best credit cards to apply for, yeah. for maximum point usage or, or mile usage. Yeah. So when you're buying products, for your Amazon business, you're getting money back for those purchases and it's not coming direct out of your bank account. You're actually earning money off the money that you're spending. And then also, we'll, we'll dive deep into Amazon lending, some SBA loans, yeah. and some other funding opportunities. So when you're at that point where you need an investment from a third party, you know exactly where to get that. Absolutely. And I mean, there's awesome information. And now kind of let's touch on where uh, where we see the future. Where we see the future of Amazon Lit and where we're going. Oh, man, we're diving deep into wholesaling. So yeah. we're actually becoming a wholesaler, showcasing at some trade shows and offering products to new and existing Amazon sellers just like yourself. Mm -hmm. It's growing pretty rapidly. We have a relationship with uh, close to 50 distributors all across the country and there's just no way we could process all those products. You know, a lot of people ask us, yeah. ha, don't, why don't you sell the products That's on Amazon? Saying, yeah, yeah. Are you going to be on the listing and any product we wholesale, we do not sell on Amazon ourselves. And that's not because it's, it's not profitable, it's just we don't have the time or the labor force to process every single SKU that we get in a catalog. And we see the opportunity. I mean, listen, we've worked with, like Eric said, we right now we work with about 50 distributors, but through the years we've worked with hundreds of distributors and most of them don't accommodate e-commerce. Mm. So we know how because we've done it for over seven years just with Amazon Lit, let alone prior to that, you know? You know, over 10 years together uh, doing online services. Anyways, the long, the short end of that is that we know how to accommodate e-commerce because we are e-commerce, so we know what we need and we know how to provide that. So yeah, I'm really excited about the wholesale yeah. venture and what we're going to be providing you guys, some great products. Mm. One of the things we've learned from wholesalers is, you know, sometimes they sell a product to one e-commerce and then they sell it to a hundred others and, mm. then, and then you have all these sellers on the same listing, saturated, drop yeah. of the price, penny wars. 
that's not us. Yeah. We're gonna have listings. We're gonna we're gonna sign up contracts with certain certain sellers and really make sure that if it's yeah. your listing and you're obligated to it and you're gonna continue purchasing it, it stays yours. Yeah. Um, and some of the other benefits yeah. too, no longer getting files without UPCs yes. or descriptions or pricing or case pack. Also, no longer having to reach out to a distributor for the proper format to submit an invoice for approval and gunwaiting. On gating, yeah. we know all the requirements that are needed, and uh, we'll be providing that in our invoices. Absolutely. Um, and you know some of the other benefits too is we're going to provide ASINs and profitability yeah. because you know our, our own scraper and and the, and the own in-house software that we have has that, so yeah. we'll provide that to you guys. Yeah. Um, you know, it's I, I, that's going to be huge. But let's talk about some of the other things. I mean, that's just one thing. Yeah. So what about right now? We're doing a little close to two million in sales a month. Do you think that's it for, for no, Amazon? Lit? No, this is, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Twenty nineteen has been the best year for us as far as profit margin and ROI and growing the bottom line and even growing our relationship with with new distributors yeah. already four months in. Um, so no, it's it. We're we're working right now on global expansion. We're also expanding on eBay, Walmart, and Jet. Yeah. Um, you know, we're we're looking into Amazon Japan, the third largest mm-hmm. economy in the world. Amazon Germany, Italy, France, uh, Spain, UK, mm-hmm. uh, possibly Amazon Australia and Amazon Middle East soon, and then and then the small new marketplaces that are jumping up. You know, uh, my wife recently has been talking about Poshmark mm. and, and how that thing's just taken yeah. over. And so there's so many opportunities out there. And I learned from our experience with Amazon, part of the reason of our success was was jumping in early and not stopping, you know? And that's it. You, you jump into something and just because it's not big yet, as long as you stay on it and you're part of it, you know, we watch it grow and you'll grow with it. And then you will have an advantage, mm. you know? Uh, and one of the things, you know, I hear people say all the time that we're talking to is their biggest regret is not starting mm. sooner. Yeah. And that's what I suggest to you guys. When we started this video, we were talking about just do it. Yeah. Like just do it. Just get started. Get your feet wet so you can learn how to swim. You gotta get your wheat your can get your wheat. You gotta get your feet wet first, then get your wheat, and then and then you'll learn how to swim. You know, take your time, but learn. And it's okay to to make mistakes Absolutely. through a process. And you know, hopefully, we'll be here to guide you as well. And um, you know, research, but get your feet wet. Let's get going. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the other things we're going to cover too is uh, in the future is is consultations with some larger. Uh, manufacturers mm-hmm. and brands. You know, we've done a lot of business yeah. with small, medium-sized businesses and helping them with their enhanced mm-hmm. brand content and exclusivity. We've mm-hmm. had exclusivity with them online, but now we're looking to catch some of the bigger fish, you yeah. know? Some of those know, huge manufacturers and brands, yeah. Exactly. We're looking at some, uh, you know, companies that we see sell right now online, uh, but we, we know we could do it better for them. And, uh, you know, and even do some consultations where we might not sell for them, but we kind of help guide them to set up their own uh, warehousing yeah. and how to structure that for e-commerce. Yeah. And also in the near future for us is a, a brick and mortar store. Yes, you know, brick multiple, and, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, brick and mortar still holds a, a large, very large percentage, way larger than the e-commerce percentage of the consumer goods market share. Yeah. You know, tons of people still go to your local brick and mortar stores and, and we want a piece of that. Yeah, I mean, eight, so so e-commerce keeps growing and it's the new thing, that's why everyone's talking about it, but still eight out of 10 uh, consumers are purchasing in a retail brick and mortar mm-hmm. store. Eight out of 10. Mm-hmm. That means for every sale that we make online, you know, four times that is happening in, in, in the retail yeah. market. So there's plenty of room for growth there. And, and, and the combination, you know, and we'll go into that, like the brick and click, which is having a store that's, that's, that's the combination of both uh, your typical brick and mortar store, but it also has that e-commerce advantage. Like if we mm-hmm. don't have a product in stock, we could mail it to them. And we're gonna go really into that. I don't even wanna cover those topics yeah. yet because as we continue to grow, like I said, we're gonna continue to share that information with you guys and you're really gonna see the whole growth process and hopefully you take in some of this and you grow yourselves with yeah, it. Absolutely. What are some of the other things we're gonna be covering and growing into in the future? Um, so we're going to be definitely expanding into other markets, you yeah. know, like uh, the Ebays, the Walmarts, the Jets, they hold a much smaller percentage. 
of, of the e-commerce markets, but we're going to get a piece of that action as well. Our, our, our eBay sales, as you can see on our Instagram account, they're definitely, they're less than 1% of our total revenue, but there's still a lot of opportunity. A lot of you guys are crushing it on eBay right now. I see a lot of the people we follow on Instagram doing, you know, 100,000, 200,000, 500,000 a month and eBay sales, so there's a lot of opportunity there as well. Right, and we haven't even tapped into that yet, and yeah. that's that's our next venture. Yeah. I think I think the second half of 2019, you guys will see our eBay numbers jumping up a lot. Yeah. Um, just like, you know, trying to, at least, you know, we figured Amazon's about 10 times bigger than, than eBay, so with that in mind, we should be doing at least 200,000 on eBay if we're doing Absolutely. 2 million on Amazon. Yeah. And then lastly, what we're going to be growing is is Amazon Lit with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're going to continue to provide legitimate, authentic content, ho hopefully educational, and you know, we can use your guidance as far as what information you guys are mm -hmm. looking to see. I mean, we know from ourselves the information that we had questions about, yeah. the fears that we had about the unknown when we were getting started. We'll be sharing all of that kind of putting some light on those darker areas as far as how to ship to FBA, just the basics. We're gonna be doing a video yeah. about how to ship to FBA next week. Yeah. Uh, I remember our first pallet shipment to FBA. I was sitting there, I, I don't think I slept that night. I was just so concerned. We sent six pallets out. I was like, what if I did something wrong and it just never makes it or makes it and gets lost mm -hmm. in the system? So we'll cover some of that, make sure that everything that you do with shipping out your first FBA shipment is correct. And if you ship that out before you can kind of follow us and see that everything you're doing right now is correct yeah. you know you don't want to have a delay with your shipments um, because of something you're doing incorrectly actually there's a couple steps you could take to speed up the process it used to take seven to ten up to seven to ten days to check in our products now uh, it's in the first hour that it's received there up to you know three five days and yeah. you'll see everything being checked in and it's because of some of the things we've done downstairs to speed up that process yeah. we sent twenty three thousand dollars worth of one product into amazon last night it arrived at 2 a.m and by what what were we here 8 30 8 30 a.m this morning yeah you know so six and a half hours later it was already listed for sale on amazon for sale not back ordered but yeah. listed for sale listed for sale on amazon yeah. Yeah. so you're gonna be able to find all this content here on YouTube, so smash that subscribe button, click that like button, leave your comments below, and you can also find us at you can find us on Instagram. We have our Facebook group, make sure you know the private Facebook group, make sure to click to, to be added there. We'll ask you a couple questions. And if you're a legit seller who's just trying to learn, you'll be added to our group and there's tons of information there. There's tons of content that we're putting on Instagram. We're going to be putting more information on Twitter. Like Eric said, the YouTube channel, you know, DM us any questions you have. But on the YouTube channel, make sure to put the suggestions and comments below. We read everything. I'm so mm -hmm. proud to say that, you know, we usually respond in minutes. hours. Yeah. Hours at the most. Minutes most of the time. I'm just being conservative. Hours yeah, yeah, at yeah. the most, you know. Uh, because we love what we do mm -hmm. and uh, you know I love watching you guys grow it kind of reminds me of the beginnings mm -hmm. you know some of the questions I get I'm just like oh yeah kind of reminiscing uh, like oh yeah I remember that and yeah. uh, you know so this is us this is what we're about this is our lifestyle like we said Absolutely. and this is just the first of many that we're going to be shooting and uh, we hope we provide you guys legitimate authentic content so you know where to find it when you're looking and you have questions and or if you just want to see what e-commerce is about and you don't even want to sell online and you just really want to see what it's like, we're going to be providing tons of real content on a daily basis showing our operations. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a great time. So we're excited to get this going and uh, we'll see you in our next video. Stay lit, guys. Like Stay that lit. Fire.